Hello. <laughs> so I was asked for practices and a talk about staying in the body. And, and I'll be offering a practice in another video. So stay tuned, stay connected. But I just wanted to offer up some tips about staying in the body. So there are those of us who have a hard time grounding. Um, you could say that, you know, in, in terms of Ayurveda, we're more vata by nature, or maybe we've experienced a lot of trauma. Um, because that's usually those of us who have a, a habit of leaving. It's that something doesn't feel comfortable. And because we were in circumstances where we couldn't physically leave, we devise really skillful ways to psychically leave. Um, so we can split ourselves, we can go to special lands, um, we can call in imaginary friends or, or call in other beings uh, to hang out with us. Um, we can go to other astral places. We can create different, so many different kinds of personalities because all personalities are defe defense constructs, you could say. And so, you know, we could create a lot of them if we wanted to. And one thing that's helpful is to notice, you know, your different ways of to notice when you start to leave. Um, and I would also include in the, the leaving your body, because that would almost be like the flight response, um, where there's the fight response as well. And also the part of us that goes into freeze or the, the part of us, and, and you'll know it's freeze because it's almost like someone's asking you something and you actually just don't have your words anymore. You know, you almost feel like a deer in headlights or you're just frozen solid. Um, but but it's almost like you're blank and and you don't want to be blank but you're like I'm blank and and so we can have these this this freeze habit in our system and and with the freeze the way I was able to start to move that through so it didn't dominate me as my response when I would get freaked out was to start to recognize that I was frozen and the moment you can start to recognize whether we're talking you're frozen or you've left your body or anything, if you're able to know that you're doing it, that means that there's a witness. There's one who's actually anchored and able to see what's happening. And then you can actually start to see, okay, that's me freezing and now I'm gonna wait with myself while I start to unfreeze. So it's, it's almost like you're learning to sit on a bench beside yourself while one part of you is, is having all this stuff going on and you're able to sit beside yourself and witness it. Um, and as a, a side note is that we can also have, um, there's fight, flight, freeze. And someone just recently said, and there's friend, where we get so uncomfortable that we can't actually leave or say no. We just pretend that we're like friends and we're okay with all of this. Well, inside we're actually completely terrified and we want to run away, but we're just going to say yes. So just to be aware if there's that, because I think a lot of us have been ruined by being overly polite. Um, you know, what if that friend mask has, has kind of dominated you as well? But let's just go back to how to stay in the body. So if we have compassion that, that if we're leaving our body, that means that there's a part of us that's really uncomfortable and that part of our practice and homework is learning to start to vocalize what our truth is, like starting to say, even though it terrifies us, like, no, I don't want that, you know, and, and even to like put our hand up, no. And, and also to admit when we really want something, because just like we might have a hard time saying no to what we don't want, sometimes we don't say that, realize that we can say yes to what we do want. So I used to think like, oh man, like I've left my body, let's just pull ourselves back and push ourselves back in. And then I realized, well, if I'm leaving because I'm, I'm uncomfortable and something doesn't feel good, then probably what's going to bring me back is pleasure. So the visual I have is 
like, let's pretend that like my body is like a house and it's like a party, okay? So that if there's a part of me that's uncomfortable with events that are happening or something that's happening in my life, and if I start to see myself leave, what I'm going to do as the one who's still witnessing and like staying at the party watching the part who's leaving, then I can be like, okay, like, sure, you know what, you can go, but you can come back anytime you want. You know, there's no time constraint. Um, we have snacks here for you. You can show up in your pajamas. You can have toothpaste on your face. Like, you don't have to do your hair. Like, you know, and, and we accept you as you are. So that there's a, a very inviting I don't, I don't even want to use the word tolerant, but like inviting, loving environment that I have that's always welcoming me back. So the biggest homework for us, if we have a, have a habit of leaving ourselves, is to really check, are we creating an inner environment that actually is, is inviting for us to want to come back? So if we're hard on ourselves, if we're judging ourselves, if we're constantly criticizing ourselves, if we're constantly like telling ourselves, like cutting our legs off, telling ourselves we're making the wrong choices, like that's not going to make it very exciting to want to come back. Like who would want to come back to somebody who's like criticizing and judging and like just looking down at you the whole time, right? So it's getting aware that we're at an age where whatever nasty voices and, and judgmental voices that we've inherited um, or that were said to us, they are now wired into our system and our work is actually taking out those voices and putting in some really kind, supportive, helpful voices. And, and along with that too is just checking in like, oh wow, I'm really freaked out right now. What do I need in order to want to stay or in order to want to come back. And you know, most of us on the planet, like we feel forced to stay in situations that actually don't work for us, whether it's like a job, you know, or a relationship or, you know, a housing situation or, or something where we might have this belief in our system. Like I can't actually have what I want. And, or sometimes it's just like we don't, we can't put up boundaries with other people and, and we don't realize like, actually I can set healthy boundaries for myself. So there's, there's some work to be done around that of being really honest and, and, and asserting ourselves and saying what we actually want and what we don't want. So I, I don't look at leaving the body as a problem. Um, I think it's a helpful thing to just acknowledge like, oh, things feel really intense and, and now I'm leaving. Um, this is where the practice of being able to start to feel the sensations in the body and to be able to stay with them as long as we can can be helpful. Uh, back in the day where when I didn't want to feel, I would just leave my body immediately. It was like, I can't handle this. So I actually had to do practices around, yeah, I can handle feeling instead of, you know, trying to uh, cover those or change those feelings by drinking something, taking something, um, you know, eating a bunch of stuff, you know, whatever I would do to kind of manipulate the feeling. And it's like, no, I'm going to learn to be with the feeling. And it was a practice, you know, that maybe like I could stay in the beginning 20 seconds of sensations and then I was like, okay, I'm done. You know, now it's like, okay, some heavy waves can come through and it's like, all right, 45 minutes and it's, it's, it's out or 20 minutes, 45.